Hi all, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Today I'm really excited to do a project with dot mandala painting on fabric. And in this particular video, I'm going to be using this 100% cotton t-shirt. Um, it's, um, I just got it at like the uh, department store Kohl's. Um, and I've got a piece of cardboard here that has some um, uh, contact paper on it just to keep it um, from getting soaked. And I will put that inside of the, uh, as a form, inside of the t-shirt to keep it the paint from bleeding through. I'm going to be using several colors of the uh, DecoArt So Soft fabric paint. And this particular fabric paint does not require heat setting, which is why I chose it. Um, some of the, some of the uh, fabric paints ask you to, to heat set it with an iron and I um, didn't want to do that because of the dots so I decided to go with this particular type of paint. Now you can see that I'm having to mix my own color uh, because this t-shirt is got a sort of a gray tan background and what I what I'm looking for my concept here is to actually use a printed fabric much as you would use uh, paper in a collage I wanted to see how it would look with using printed fabric um, because I really thought the idea of having the dot painting and then uh, you know a print would be really nice so I have I've done it on a couple of t-shirts this one is a just a dotted print and what I've done is mixed up my paint, as you can see, and trying to get as close as I can. And this is where, um, you know, it was a little bit frustrating for me um, with my concept because I couldn't match the color exactly. So I almost gave up at one point, but I decided to keep on going and just finish the project. I found that at the point at which I want to get up, uh, give up is just a time to get up and take a little breath and maybe walk away for a minute, but to finish the project because in the end you may be pleased uh, with the result. And I can't do anything with the t-shirt once I got a certain point anyway, so um, I just decided to keep going. So what I'm going to do is I've mixed up my paint and I'm going to actually apply a little bit of paint with my, with my nail daughters to each of the dots in the section that I'm going to paint. And this is about a two and a half inch um, section around the collar that I'll be painting on. And then um, I've taken some painter's tape and I'm just going to tape around the edge of the collar where the, uh, where the seam is um, so that I can not get any paint on top of that. And then I'm going to use a cosmetic sponge. I let that first set dry, by the way, when I put the dots on, uh, painted on top of the dots, I let that, I set that aside and let that dry. And then I have a cosmetic sponge. This is just an inexpensive cosmetic sponge from the dollar store. And you can see me kind of chopping it up the edge. I don't want uh, a hard edge. So I'm kind of chopping it up, putting some little dimples in it like I would have if I had a natural sponge. You could also use a kitchen sponge that has little holes in it, uh, and that would work perfectly fine too. Just cut a little corner or a little strip off of your sponge. So I'm taking the paint and the sponge, and I'm just applying it in that two and a half uh, inch section around the collar and just getting it um, on there. Now I'm not trying to cover everything necessarily, but I am trying to get enough paint. And the reason I decided to do that is because I was doing the dot painting, I wasn't sure how the fabric, um, because it's an absorbent fabric, I wasn't sure how uh, it would work with dot painting. So I decided to put a base layer of paint down. And then I will just stipple, essentially um, stippling the paint onto that section of cloth uh, to get a good coverage. And I did have to do a couple of coats. Now what I'm going to be doing is pinning uh, the fabric down to my cardboard and that's just to give it a little bit of stability so that the fabric doesn't move around. I don't have to worry about it um, you know getting stretched out of shape or anything. I, I put just a few pins, it wasn't very many, just a few pins in there to keep it uh, to help keep its shape. I'm going to be re using my regular dotting tools. I'm using the crystallite crochet hooks and my nail dotters and I will put a little bit of this black paint into a paint tray and go ahead and get started. Uh, I have flipped the um, the piece around so I'm painting upside down actually. You're getting kind of a side view but I'm just orienting it so most of the fabric from the t-shirt is away from me so I don't uh, have to worry about getting paint on like the hem or something like that. 
And then it's just a matter of starting to paint. So I'm using the P6, uh, I'm sorry, the P16, and that is the 11.5mm um, uh, crochet hook. That's the largest one in my set. And I'm going to go ahead and place my first dot. And then I'm using my G6 4mm to put three dots on the top and my nail dotters to just walk the dots around. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I'm not getting... if if I were doing this on canvas or paper, I'd be getting a pretty crisp edge. If you look closely, you can see that there's a little bit of bleeding. It's not much, but it isn't as crisp as if I were doing it on a canvas. Um, and this is a, you know, absorbent t-shirt and the paint that I put down as my base layer isn't, you know, it's not fully saturated. Um, so at any rate, I, um, I, uh, I'm starting this pattern with the G6 and then I'll walk my dots around with my lar largest nail dotter and as I need to uh, because the paint doesn't travel quite as, fa uh, as far as if I were doing on canvas I will come in with a smaller nail dotter and finish it up and keep going around. So this is a really simple uh, petal type design um, and uh, you'll notice that it's very very repetitive. So in the first design element, which is in the center of uh, the collar, uh, the center part of the t-shirt around the neckline, I will actually uh, just use my G6 four millimeters uh, for the large dots and then my nail dotters around. I will actually put six, this will have six rows around the main dot. And I'll use that same design element or same design pattern for the rest of the um, around the collar, I will just reduce the number of rows that I put in. And as I get, um, as I move along, I'll start to use a little bit smaller tools for the center dot. So this is a very easy pattern and I think it's quite effective. It's kind of giving it a necklace uh, kind of effect, you know, filling in um, around, uh, around the whole collar. So you'll see here, I'm just continuing on, and when I need to, I go over the dots and use a smaller tool. And I'll just continue this pattern. As I need to, I will uh, put the same size dots. You'll notice on this row, I am putting the same size dots for several um, times, you know, several dots, and then walk it as I get closer towards the end. And I'm going to be going in with the last row. This is this main element has six rows overall. It was really fun to do this project. I've done t-shirts before, but not with the dot painting. It's mostly been just more traditional type painting. So I haven't used the dot painting. I wasn't entirely sure how it was going to work out. I overall was very pleased with the uh, with the look and the effect. Um, I am going to do some more projects. I'll do some plain t-shirts and I have some denim and some um, canvas bags that I'll be doing. So what I'm doing here now that I finished my six rows is I'm just putting the crown on the top of this uh, top dot and walking around. And that's the basic pattern. So you can see here's a little uh, different view of that. And I'm just going to follow that all of that repetition all the way around by decreasing the number of rows and then ultimately using smaller tools. Now I'm going in with the um, the M13 nine millimeter and putting in my center dot and then I will just continue to repeat uh, the pattern all the way around. I just hand measured this. I didn't use any kind of grid or anything like that. Um, if you wanted to, you could use a grid and a fabric marker, uh, one of those water soluble or, or um, disappearing type ink uh, markers, fabric markers. Be sure it's a fabric marker. I didn't do that. I didn't bother with it. I can see that it would help, um, you know, to do if you were doing more complex patterns uh, that you might want to do that. So I've uh, gone down a size in my, the uh, size for the main dot and then it's just repeating that same pattern that I did for the central element all the way around and I'll speed this up and we'll just kind of walk through uh, what that looks like.
you know, one thing I wanted to share with you, I think I told you, you can see it here. The color's not a great match. And um, I was really frustrated by that. But that's my own thing. You know, I was trying something different. And I hope to encourage everybody to just try some different things. Just, you know, you've got an idea. Just see if you can make that idea come to fruition, even if it's not perfect on the first pass. I've done another uh, t-shirt that you'll see um, at the end. I'm not going to do a video on it, but um, you'll see it at the end. I was much more pleased with that one. And that's because I was able to match the background a little bit more because it was a white background. So um, just using the white paint uh, to create that little collar was easier uh, than trying to match a color. So that's something that you might want to keep in mind as you're uh, choosing the t-shirt that you want to work on. So I'm just continuing on with this pattern. I've sped this up. Now I'm putting the ornament, uh, finishing up this last uh, row here, and then just like I did on that center piece, I'll put the ornament on the top dot there. And that's just a couple of dots, and a little bit of walking the dots around to give it a little bit more interest so it doesn't just end. Another little design element. And we're going to go faster now to finish up the rest of these. This is the... Um, I've gone down a size and tool. This is the K 10.5, 6.5 millimeter hook um, that I'm using. And uh, same, same pattern, just reducing the number of rows. So the center element had six and then five, four, and just keep decreasing until you run out of space. I mentioned that I have a couple of other projects. I got, um, I have a little denim top that I'm going to do. It's for Piper. So it's a 3T. So I'll be doing a small denim uh, kids shirt. And then I have, um, I have a denim or a, a canvas bag that I got at Michael's um, last year, late last year. In their personalize it section, they had some bags that had colored bottoms. So I got a canvas bag. I'm going to do a canvas bag. And then I'm really excited about this because I am going to do some leather painting. I've done a leather bracelet. If you check out one of my back videos, I did a leather bracelet using some Lumiere paints uh, and some other acrylic paints on an old belt that I had just repurposed uh, into a bracelet. But I um, have some leather uh, bracelet blanks that I have. And then I also have a couple of leather purses. And I'm going to try dot painting on those two, those items coming up. So I've got those kind of stacked up in my queue of projects. I'm really excited about uh, the leather painting. I'm really anxious to see how that turns out. Um, because I think that would be really a lot of fun. Um, I'm just... Uh, excited about the purses that I got. So I'm really interested to, to work on those. You can start looking around in thrift stores, um, uh, like for a uh, small envelope or kind of clutch type bag, something with a smooth surface and enough of a surface that you can paint on. Um, you can check the thrift stores or you might have something in your closet that you can repurpose um, or you might want to buy one. I actually bought two new ones that were not that expensive. Um, but you can kind of look around and see if you can find a leather um, uh, 
purse or, or wallet type thing that you can paint on. That should be a fun, a fun project. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'm just continuing on, as you can see, uh, changing out the size of my tools as I need to and reducing the number of rows. And we just keep with that until we get all the way to the edge. Now that I'm finished the edge, that's as much of the collar um, as I'm going to put on. I need to kind of finish this up. And you can see if you look here, I don't, I'm not entirely happy with how I've got this kind of um, blank space there, you know, where I added uh, the paint. So I'm going to go in and fill that in a little bit and try to disguise it and try to make that transition from where I put my base paint on to the rest of the t-shirt. So I'm going to add a couple of elements. I'm using my G6 uh, 4 millimeter, and I'm going to place some dots in between each of those collar elements. And you can, depending on how far you go out with your base paint, you can decide how many rows of this you might need to put on. I just put on one. So I've got the uh, those dots down, and I'm going to go take my nail dotters, and I'm going to go around them. And I'm starting at the um, 12 o'clock, walk the dots around one side, start at 6 o'clock, and walk the dots up the other side. So I'll show you that in just a minute here. So down one side and then at the bottom a larger dot and then walk the dots up. And it gives it a little bit of a, you know, a different, uh, it's not, uh, they're not the same size all the way around. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish those up. And this is just, as I said, a way to, to make the transition a little less harsh um, with where I added that base paint. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on with trying to hide that transition. And I can see where I had covered up the dots that were there before. I'm just going to put them back in. So it hopefully looks like the fabric is seamless. One of the things I could have tried is just to, I didn't think about this of course until after and I'm not sure how it would work, but I could have just um, painted out the dots and not put that base layer of paint. I thought I needed to to give, um, because I'm doing the dot painting to give something to grab on, but I, I'm going to experiment with that a little bit. So here it is, the finished piece. I think it turned out great. Um, I I really... Uh, enjoyed doing the project. I did another one on a, a very printed fabric, uh, which is the pink and brown one, and I was really thrilled with the way that one turned out too. I'm not going to do a video on it, but I really like the way it turned out. So I really hope you enjoyed this fabric painting project. Stay tuned for more because I'm really enjoying working on the fabric um, side of things. So I'll bring some more videos. I want to thank you for joining me in my studio. I would love it if you would subscribe or leave me a comment. Um, say hello. I really enjoy uh, talking with you all through, um, through the videos. So thank you so much for joining me in my studio. Take care.